Let's look at this example. Again, we have some experimental data. This is an experiment involving the um, motion of a toy car moving at a constant acceleration along a straight line. And we recorded its position with respect to time. And how are we going to use these data to determine this constant acceleration? We know that in motion, velocity is the rate of change of an object's position, and acceleration is the rate of change of its velocity. Therefore, here we have position data with respect to time. And if we look at it, we can see that for every time segment, for example, when time changes from 0 to 0 0.8 cent, uh, second, we can calculate the average velocity based on its position. So that will be this right here minus this. That's the position change in the given time period divided by the change in time. So the average velocity during the first 0 0.8 second is going to be 0 0.75 centimeter per second. So from 0 0.8 second to 2.1 second, the position changes from 0 0.6 centimeter to 4.3. Therefore, for the next time period, the average velocity is, again, the end position minus the initial position divided by the end time minus the initial time for this time period. And at this point, you can already tell that I can copy and paste the formula. So this way, I have calculated the average velocity for the different time period. So now, it is incorrect to say that, for example, at time equals to 0 0.8 seconds, the velocity is 0 0.75 centimeter per second. That's incorrect, because by saying that, you are implying instantaneous velocity. However, what we calculated here are average velocities. So you can only say that between this time period, the average velocity is 0 0.75 centimeter per second. However, in this case, we can actually use the average velocity to approximate the instantaneous velocity. Just because there's no better way to get more information, to get more accurate on the instantaneous velocity. So these are all we can get from our experimental data. So what do we do from here? Well, if acceleration is a constant, then again, from physics, you know that velocity equals to the constant acceleration times t, time. So velocity will change linearly with time. Again, this should look familiar to you because this is, again, a linear relation. It suggests that if we plot the time data as our independent variable, and then we plot our velocity data as our dependent variable, we should get a straight line, and the slope of that line should be the acceleration constant that we're looking for. Therefore, um, and then insert the scatter, for, scatter plot. Once again, let me caution you, this is using an average velocity to represent the instantaneous velocity at time 0 0.8 seconds, et cetera, et cetera. This is not accurate, but it is a reasonable approximation. So let's fix the axis titles a little bit. Here we have time in the unit of second. And then here, if you want to be accurate, you will say average velo velocity accurate in your language in the unit of centimeter per second. Okay, so this chart is a V versus T plot. So you can tell that our data do fall on a straight line, very close to a straight line, that does support our linear relation uh, represented by this equation right here, that V equals to A times T. Therefore, if we fit these data to a linear trend line, then the slope should be the acceleration that we're looking for. Therefore, let's pick 
all the data, right click, add trend line, and then over here, choose linear option, because this is the linear model we're trying to fit. Display equation, display the R squared value. Now, from physics, you probably know that the initial velocity of motion really doesn't have to be zero. Um, and quite frankly, right now, we don't have much information of the initial velocity. However, this intercept suggests that at time equals to zero, the velocity is negative. It is actually in the opposite direction. That is very unlikely. Therefore, we're just going to go ahead and assume the intercept is indeed zero, which indicates that when time is zero, the velocity is actually zero. So that is, again, a reasonable assumption. Therefore, with that, according to our data fitting, we can see that the slope of this line is about 1.8 if we keep one decimal place. Therefore, that's going to be the answer we're looking for. The average acceleration determined from our experimental data is 1.8 centimeter per second squared. I want to point out, though, what we just did, the process we used to calculate these average velocity values, that was called the numerical differentiation. It is a very useful tool. Let me show you what I mean. In physics class or your calculus class, you probably know this. Instantaneous velocity is ds dt, which means that the instantaneous velocity is the time derivative of the displacement function, and it can be approximated as delta s over delta t, which is the change in displacement or the change in the position uh, over the change in time. And really, what is the definition of differentiation? This actually equals to this when delta t approaches 0, when delta t is infinitely small. And because of that, we can use this equation, this method, to approximate differentiation. And that's exactly what we did. And that's what we meant by numerical differentiation. And similarly, because acceleration is dv dt, again, this is instantaneous acceleration. So um, in our case, if our acceleration was actually not a constant, uh, which is and variable, we can use a similar method. We can use the average velocity data uh, and take the difference in velocity data at a different time period divided by the time period to approximate the instantaneous acceleration. And that will be even less accurate than our velocity results because we are processing the same set of data for the second time. But again, as I said, that's an approximation method. In our case, because acceleration is a constant, therefore, we can write this equation, velocity equals to constant acceleration time time. And because of that, when we plot our average velocity data against the time, uh, we, get, we got the straight line. And the slope, in that case, is our acceleration.